Okay, so as Krishna was saying, uh, my name is Aman and uh, I started with, as a computer system engineer. I still have that as my profession. Uh, we do infrastructure uh, consulting, security, threat assessment, and things like that. And somewhere uh, almost simultaneously, I started my business in 19, around 2000 to 2003 when my daughter was growing up. As most dads and parents think, but Joe Yakina, Monopoly, Barbara Napia, the children, the children, the children, the children, the started looking at games. We started looking at what we could spend time with our kids, with our parents. So I come from a family which has two generations. Even my grandfather was alive. So my daughters, they grew up with a great great grandfather. So a lot of people in the house and board games were something that we were thinking of. So that's how the journey started. Um, cut to 2023. Uh, today we feel that uh, going forward for all of us, craft and play uh, have to become part of our lifestyle, uh, both in our patronage. And somehow I feel that these both these journeys will uh, sort of coincide in our life, come together in our life. And that's what Kolikhe is about. Kolikhe is about uh, inviting craft. Because India as a nation is a soul of the car. And if I will play, uh, and we talk about play as we go about this quick presentation. So, chess, okay, you know, most of you, what comes to your mind when you think about chess? Strategy or, you know, these kinds of things. Uh, just stand back a minute uh, and think about any kind of relevant strategy that. Two people start equally at the very start. Any war where two people have started absolutely as equals. Exactly 50% of the economy. So to speak. You know? um, so, so lots of questions um, about chess. We all know that it started in India. We say Shakaranji say Aya. But then it's a you know, story goes further back into something called Chatura. We talk about that a little bit. We talk about how the pieces are shaped and we talk about maybe very quickly the uh, history of chess. So um, if, if, uh, if I had to think about the pieces, you know, the bishop, how do I, is there a point I can get? So if you think about the bishop, you know, how we call it a camel, right? How many people call a bishop a camel? No, marker at the pointer, pointer. Pointer near, no problem. So the, the thing on the extreme right is a bishop, right? So we call it a camel, right? Huh? Why do we call it a camel? Any idea? So the ancient board game of Chaturang had eight pieces. The head was the king, the, econ the economy and the assets were the chest, health and aggression was the horse. So you had the, the king, the elephant, the horse, the trade and engagement, and the effort. The two hands and the two feet. Yade. Art, Chitro ka, ek insan hota tha, aur ek sansar bhi, ek country bhi. Look at a country, it's got administration, assets, it's got um, health and ambition, and it's got trade and engagement and effort. So all these three elements come together as a person and as a country. Now, in Rajasthan, a camel is how you trade and engage. But in Bengal, it is the boat. And in some place like Madhya Pradesh, it is the chariot. So you had these three variations in Shatranj also. How many people are from Bengal or have Taba? Right? Taba essentially means stake. But chess doesn't have any stake. Why do we call it Daba? In Daba, we have Nonko, which is the boat. So ancient uh, form of Chaturang was played with money person who came with a larger uh, stack of money could buy back his pieces more. So four people sitting together had unequal armies because they bought unequal stakes. So Baba essentially comes from that thought process. And what is a boat in Persian? Duke. 
which we today call as an elephant. So somewhere down the line, it's very interesting how the camel becomes the rook in modern day chess and how the elephant starts still moving straight but taking the place of the camel on the ancient board game and how the camel you know, takes uh, the place of the elephant and so on. So lots of interesting things about uh, how chess was and how this four player chess goes to Persia becomes a two player chess and how the uh, element of chance. Is there a war without the element of chance? Is there a war without the element of attachment? Is there a war without the element of uncertainty? Your strategy ka koi jagda hota nahi hai. So, and no two people fight a war. All wars have more than two people involved. So you have a very, very interesting platform that actually simulates war. You know, when you think about Mahabharat, Yudhishthir and um, uh, Duryodhan, they weren't playing. They were choosing to exchange uh, instead of going to war. The whole setup was decision It was not a game, it was really war. Um, and, and we had games where we could simulate war, where you have emotions, you have ego, you have you know associations and you know, um, people uh, sort of backstabbing you and you have a lot at stake money and attachment. So that's uh, a little bit about the history of Chaturang really quick because I have a short time and, uh, and I need to uh, race through some images. A lot of my new friends here took these pictures, they are out on the board, we can uh, very quickly see them when we, they are outside for your viewing. Now we will come to another quick game, snakes and ladders. And my purpose here is to just sort of run through these so that they generate some sort of interest and then we can talk about them at length. I'll be outside to talk to you. So anybody who's not played snakes and ladders? Ah, nine. Acha. So this is a very ancient format of snakes and ladders. What do you see? You don't see ladders and you see a snake at the last. You know? So you see, uh, how many of you here understand, uh, have, heard, have heard about word clouds? Everybody. Word clouds, right? Infographics? Mind maps, all design students, right? Word cloud infographics, mind maps coming together on a board game to create an experiential engagement. You see a word cloud here? I can show you an infographic. It's an eight by nine, eight door, uh, eight parts to the human body, nine windows, and ten doors. Ten doors meaning the ten energy channels, the nadis, where you have the ten snakes. So it's really a human body you are looking at from an infographic perspective. And uh, there is a left side, there's a right side, there are the energy chakras in the spine in the middle. So there's a lot and we very quickly see another version of the same game. And this is how you kind of see it. So what you have is snakes and ropes. So if I go back here, you don't see any um, sort of ladders, but you see what could be ropes and what could be snakes. And so here, can someone tell me why ropes? Why not ladders? Any ideas, someone? Ropes because um, in a dark room there are no lights. Can you differentiate between a snake and a rope? No. What do you need? The light of knowledge. So if you see here, very interestingly, you have Kusangati and Susangati. If I had a pointer right here, so there are lots of dualities on the right hand side of the board. You have Kusangati, Susangati, Adharma, Sudharma, you have Avidya, Subhidya, Subhuti, Durbuti. These are all dualities. And Kusangati Susangati is essentially Sangati. But if it is giving you the experience of it, Abhiman, then it is Kusangati. So here's how you shine light through your experiences to figure out what are you really engaging with. And that, that goes across. So you have a lot of, uh, I can keep talking about this magical design of this game board for the interest of design students. But it is a very, very big takeaway for us when we are trying to think about words like gamification which are very, very limited. In gamification, we talk about achievement acquiring and essentially um, incentivization winning. Yeah. Competition is three things, bus. But we are all in a rat race. If we are doing this, we will go There is very little difference between play and life. You know, prepare for life through play. So, um, lots of things we can keep talking about. 
and I already covered this. Uh, this is a very interesting thing. I was talking about infographics, and you know, you see this crossed snake and the two snakes on the other side. So this is a visual representation of the life energy and the psychic energy. So if you read a little bit about nadis, you will very easily see that the 14 snakes represent the 14 energy channels. And we are talking about Sufism here, and Islam here. So what has, what's interesting is that when they saw our board games, they kept the visual representation but changed the words. But the visual representation has very little to do with their philosophy. We can almost see how, that's all right. <laughs> and you can almost see how uh, the snakes are sort of becoming ladders. You know, they are transitioning. Yeah, they are transitioning into. Yeah. So the snakes are slowly transitioning into ladders with time. So that's um, yeah. So yeah. no snake either. <laughs> so what we learn with joy, we never forget. It's a very popular saying. And so one of the things that Kolkhen we plan to do or we attempt at doing is we attempt at trying to create play. We attempt at getting people to play and then to create play. And the ancient people or ancient communities believed in discover, exchange and learn. We talked about bizarre. Uh, Shiv Sutra says, Vismayo Yoga Bhumika. In wonder lies the foundation of yoga or concentration. So I, I was connecting that while he was saying and so I thought I'll touch upon that, but Vismayo Yoga Bhumika. So if you can create wonder, you can create concentration and things like that. Board games are a great source to create wonder. And uh, so discover, exchange and learn. And yeah, so play to interact, play to grow, play to socialize, discover and learn, be free, focus and joy. So there's a lot more reason to play and to create play. And this is another ancient board game, I'll skip this. This is a game we created very quickly. Uh, it takes a lot of inspiration from ancient board games. Uh, a girl who was doing a workshop in the National Museum with me, she was a student in, of history and she decided to make a game on Delhi. The interesting thing here is that you see colors, they represent the 10 cities of Delhi. So Delhi is really a mashup of a lot of cities, Mehroli, Shah Jahanabad and all those. And they are organized in a spiral, which represents the spiral of time, because time is non-linear in the context of the Indian um, belief systems and they are chronological of the monuments of Delhi. So all the monuments of Delhi have been chronologically uh, arranged here in a spiral. So the oldest one is Iron Pillar. And when, what's the narrative of the Iron Pillar? Anybody has been to the Iron Pillar? The Iron Pillar's narrative is that you go and you try to hug it. So when you land on that pillar, on the digital version, it asks you, what is your Iron Pillar? What do you hug tight internally? When you land on Suraj Kund, Suraj Kund is a water reservoir. Delhi has always had a challenge with water. When you land on Suraj Kund, the system asks you, uh, what is it that you don't have, but you really need to have? And then when you land on Lal Boat, it asks you, you know, what is it that you have and you protect? And when you land on Agra Saint Ki Bauli, they are the dark water, so it asks you, what is it that you're scared of and you sort of want to stay away from? So it's an internal journey as well as an external one. And it ends in self discovery. It's also the Lotus Temple latest one of the very uh, current uh, portals and then we also have uh, a small toolbox here where you can create your own games on this kit you can play almost 29 30 different games uh, it's a simple three by three maybe. common games like knots and crosses how many have not played knots and crosses <laughs> everybody's playing but how many have played multiplayer knots and crosses like five people or six people or four people playing knots and crosses together. So you can do that. You can do that uh, very easily by changing some rules that we refuse to change. If you choose to create a five-player tic-tac-toe, you can create. And if you choose to create, oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. I was thinking I'm blocking, so I was always trying to stay away. But anyways, yeah. So. Um, we can, we can demonstrate that to use out on the table and some of the young kids have played yesterday so they can be helped. And I think that's basically what it is. Um, yeah, uh, I think there is one more uh, yeah, small problem. This presentation has been made by Nehaji. Thank you, Nehaji. And I'll quickly end with a small note. Um,